Hey everyone, it's Kristen from Kristen Naples Art. And today I'm going to be showing you how to go from this, which is just a uh, coloring page of a mandala, to this. Really easy. It looks so much more difficult than it is, but I promise you, um, if you can draw a couple simple little marks on your paper, then you will be able to do this. Now you can do this with any page, any coloring page. It doesn't have to be a mandala. Um, I did give as a bonus three free pages. So that one I showed you was one. Uh, this is another one. And then this fun little squiggly one was also another free page. So here is, I'll just put this here for you guys. If you go to my website, which is kristinaprilweeblycom slash freebies, you can get these, uh, download for free and print them, color them, or use them to doodle in. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. But first, let me just kind of show you on this page what you're going to need, what we're going to use for the tutorial. So any kind of pencil. Well, I don't want to say any kind of pencil. Um, because if you use these mechanical pencils, um, they're not quite as great because I tend to use the sides of my pencils when I do shading. So um, mechanical pencils aren't that great for that. So just a regular, any old number two pencil, a black pen. Um, I use black because I love black and white art, but you can use colored pens if you want. And a black marker and then something to blend with. So if you have a Q-tip, these blending stumps, so um, if you have these and if you can draw these, let me just move that out of the way. If you can draw these simple shapes, then you're in business and you'll be able to do exactly what I'm going to do. So it's just like a figure eight or an infinity symbol, a circle, a square, a triangle, uh, <laughs> an arc but in my group of uh, followers these are tend to be called tended to be called humpy bumpies um, a line and a curvy squiggly line so as far as pens go I don't use pencil first I just go straight with pen and I'm using this cheapy um, black pen uh, from recollections which I think is a Michaels brand Michaels craft store I think that's their brand of pen um, you can just use a regular old Sharpie, um, any type of black pen. So um, I'm just going to start by showing you, let me just use this as a reference. I'm just going to start by showing you, um, for the sake of time, I'll probably just do one little piece at a time and show you how I did that. First thing we're going to start with is just the straight line. And I'm just going to put some lines in these blank areas here. So just line, line, line. And I don't really measure the distance. I just kind of eyeball everything. Don't use a ruler. Don't have time for a ruler. But hey, if you're a perfectionist, by all means, feel free to use a ruler. super easy so far right so for the middle part again we're going to draw a straight line and you can start from any of these corners and you don't have to go straight across you can angle it up angle it down uh, do whatever so just a straight line and then one parallel to that and then pick another corner any corner whoops do the same thing, but when you get to another line, you're going to pick up your pen and put it down on the other side of it and then finish it off. Oh, my dog's getting upset. She hears somebody outside. So if you hear barking, that's her guarding the castle. Um, and then just continue on. Every time you get to a line, pick your pen up and put it on the other side and just continue and just kind of overlap as you go. 
I also want to let you guys know if you're here watching this and if you like this kind of thing, you probably also know somebody else who would enjoy this type of tutorial. And there's a little share button down in the corner. You just hit share. You can share it uh, to your friends. If you have a Facebook group, anything like that, feel free to share it. Share away. So what I'm doing now is just making little tick marks along each, each of these. Again, drawing your little line and eyeballing it as always. Just on one side. Now that we have our little lines there, now we're gonna do circles. So within these blank areas, which look like little rulers at the moment, you're just going to, I always start in a corner and just draw some circles and I make sure they all touch and they can be different sizes. They don't all have to be the same size. You can make some smaller, some bigger, but I just make sure they're touching. And I actually use these little circles a lot in my coloring pages. So if you've done any of my Zen Doodle kind of coloring pages, you've probably colored these before and probably hate me for um, making you color such tiny little things. But um, they're fun, they're easy to do, and drawing them you get one crazy, crazy hand cramp. So, you know, you can make some bigger, some smaller. And when you color these, I mean, you don't even have to color each individual one. You can just color the whole section. Let me just take my black marker and on the edge that we didn't do our tick marks on, I'm just going to take my black marker and thicken up the line that's opposite of the little tick marks. And this one we're just going to color in. Um, the next one we're going to do is the triangle. So in any one of these leafy petal looking designs, um, I usually start in a corner and just draw a line so you have your little triangle there. And throughout this whole section here, I'm just going to draw different shapes of triangles. just coming off from any direction. And you're gonna have different shapes, different sizes. And then what I did in my, is you can, you can keep going all around, but I skipped one just to give it a little bit more interest. Then I again go back in with my black marker and I just pick a couple triangles and just trace them, random ones, but I try to do ones that aren't touching each other. And that kind of gives it like a little bit of a stained glass look, I think. So again, no rulers, no um, perfection. We're just kind of going with the whole doodle. Go with the doodle. Next, I'm gonna show you using this figure eight or infinity sign. If you can draw an eight, you'll be able to draw some flowers. 
So the way I do that is I draw an eight one way and then draw an eight the other way. And you have a little flower. I do a couple of those, just space them apart. And then going back to our circles, you can make just in the empty spaces, just a couple of circles, just so there's not so much white space. Then you would just continue around, but for the sake of staying within an hour, I'm just gonna stop there with those and move out to these petal areas. So now here come the uh, <laughs> famously named Humpy Bumpies. So I start, I start in this little corner here and draw a Humpy Bumpy like that. And then um, from the middle of that one, you're going to draw another one Now I'm just going back in and doing another one right on the inside, just kind of following the arc of the Humpy Bumpy. These can be used for a lot of things. Um, if you're doing like fish scales or mermaid scales or something, these work great for that. Um, now let me go back to my black marker and I'm just going to put a circle or a dot at towards the top of one. And then coming down from the middle of that dot, I just draw a line down. So, so far we've done the lines, the humpy bumpies, the triangles, and the figure eights. Um, and uh, I apologize because I did two side by side and I wanted to show you opposites. But again, this is just for the tutorial. So um, you can, like I said before, I keep going around with one design. You can do every other design. That's up to you guys, however you wanna do it. Whatever's more comfortable for you, just go with it. Now the next one, is black marker again. So somewhere along the edge, you're just going to do a humpy bumpy. <laughs> we love humpy bumpies and fill it in. Now going back to your pen, you're just going to start on any one of them. And trace that humpy bumpy and just go all the way around and do the same thing to each one and when you get to the end just start over and go around again and you just keep going around and around tracing each one until you run out of space. Um, and you don't have to use Humpy Bumpies. You can do this a fun little doodle with starting with any shape. Like you can do a triangle and then just trace a triangle all the way around and um, just get creative with it. All right. So um, one of the things that I forgot to, to show you guys is if uh, you can draw a little swirly. That's kind of what we're going to do next. So just draw a little swirly inside each of these little teardrops. I guess all we're left with is this outer part here. So to show you guys how to do that, um, I just drew two swirly lines, but I'm just going to show you one swirly line and then we'll decorate that but you can definitely do two swirly lines i'll show you what i'm talking about here in a second so i just start pick a pick a point and start and then do your swirly curvy wavy 
whatever adjective you want to use to describe this line. And that's kind of funky, but you know what? That's okay. We're gonna we're gonna work with that. Now, um, from your swirly line, you're gonna make a humpy bumpy out to the edge, and then a humpy bumpy out to the edge. Kind of like remember when you were little and you used to draw birds like that <laughs> in the sky. So we're just gonna add some birds here. Just spacing them however far apart you want. We're not measuring. We're just eyeballing it. On just working within one little section of this, I'm going to follow the curve of that line twice. So I'm drawing two lines like that. And then skip one and do the same thing. Skip one, draw two lines, skip one, two lines. And we'll finish up here. Okay, and then on the outer row, you're gonna do the same thing, but on the opposite side of the, the one you left blank. So, going back to my black marker, on the ones that have the lines, I'm just gonna color in Oh, you know what? I just thought of something. Let me put some paper under this because I do not want my desk to get marker on it. And then you're going to leave that space white and then color in that one. So it's kind of looking like you have a white highlight going down. If you mess up, that's okay too. You can just go back in with a white highlighter and, not a white highlighter, white gel pen, oh Lord. You can go back in with a white gel pen and um, add it yourself. So let's say I accidentally colored that in. I'll show you how to fix it. Now before I had a white gel pen, I used to use, um, and I still have it, because sometimes it still comes in handy. I used to use these um, Bic correction, white out correction pens. And you just shake them and press down on the point and then you get like a white, you can see like a little white puddle there. So I used to use those before I used um, gel pens to cover cover up mistakes. But you just have to be careful because you can get a nasty puddle there. Um, but I'll I'll intentionally make a mistake again so I can show you guys how to use how I do it with the gel pen. Now, if you're using a black marker that bleeds, um, the best thing to do is stop coloring right before you get to the line. Because, I mean, if, if your marker bleeds, it's best not to fight it. Just work with it. If you know it bleeds, then um, use that to your advantage and stop right before the line and let the marker do the rest of the work for you. So... Just go back in with my white gel pen, and this one is a Signo Uniball. So 
so you can do it that way. Okay, so if you make a mistake, you don't have to trash your whole page or start over. Just fix it and keep going. Most people won't even notice the mistake after after you show it show it to them. Now I'm going to show you how to do the pencil shading. So I just have a regular old pencil, um, and I use. The oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank a tortillion. Um, it's just uh, like a cardboard wrapped cardboard, um, but you can also use a q tip, you can use your finger, um, whatever you like. So, to do the shading, and I like to use the side of my pencil like that because if you use it, hold it like a regular pencil, you don't get as thick of lines. Um, and you have to color a lot more. So I like to use this side and lay it down like that. I'm going to take my the side of my pencil and going along the darkened or the, the thicker edges, you can see I messed up there, edges of these lines, I'm just going to add a little bit of pencil shading wherever the dark, darker, bolder lines are. Now when you're doing this type of black and white doodle art, um, you can, you know, stop here, color it in, or just leave it, you can add the pencil shading. You don't have to. That's just like an extra fun step to make it more interesting. Give it a little bit de of depth. And you can work on shading within each pattern or design, or you can work on just shading each layer of the mandala. So let me show you what I mean. So within, in this one, we shaded within the design but if you want to shade the layers of the mandala, you would just go around so that's kind of like one layer and then the, these petals here would be another layer so you can go around each of those. Let me turn my paper. And go down one side and then the other. I just stuck my hand in that puddle of uh, white out. <laughs> Okay, so that's shading the um, one layer of the mandala. The next layer would be these here. And then finally, I would shade the outside. And I'm not paying close attention to, you know, keeping these lines neat or anything because once we shade it, it's all going to blend together and I'll show you that in a second. So that's kind of shading the layers of the mandala. Now if you want, you could go in and shade within each of these designs too if you want to get really, you know, hardcore with it. So you could, you know, add some shading in the little corners like that okay and then you can take your whatever you're using to blend and I'm just going to show you with this tortillion stump and just kind of 
go in a circle, circular motion and blend that out. Zoom in so you guys can see. Okay, and then the same thing. Wherever you laid your pencil down, just in a circular motion. I'll show you guys the Q-tip too, so you can see. Um, if you don't have these handy, uh, you can use a Q-tip. So we'll do. Just I prefer the the tortillions because the Q-tips are a little harder for me to hold, and you can't really get in those really tiny small areas as well. So you can shade within each design, or just shade the outer parts of the mandala, or you don't have to shade at all. You can just go right to coloring. You can go in and color all this afterwards if you want. So with this one, I start on edge and pull it out. Now what's good with this pencil is if it gets too light, you can go back in, darken it up some, or if you get too dark, you can use your eraser and clean it up. So again, you know, this type of drawing and doodling and designs are very forgiving because um, if you make a mistake, there's pretty simple ways to fix it. Okay.